Good afternoon. Welcome to the press conference for Emma Raducanu. Please, as always, raise your hand using the Zoom function if you would like to ask a question and state your name and organisation when asking a question. Please raise your hand if you would like to ask the first question. Go ahead, Martin. Yes, hello, Martin Lipson from The Sun. Uh, congratulations, Emma. What a fantastic day for you. Can you just tell me how, tell us how it feels, what your emotions are after after that sort of experience? Thank you very much. I, yeah, my emotions were, I just couldn't put them into words, really. Um, I was so overwhelmed and the last point, I kind of just dropped my racket and fell to the floor, but it was just also instinctive and in the moment I had no idea what what just happened so I mean right now I'm just on such a buzz and such a high and um, yeah I have my team who are with me in the bubble and we're all just having a great time really we're sticking to the same routines and yeah having, having a really good time here. Go ahead Howard. Hi uh, Howard Fendrich with the AP uh, I wanted to ask you to describe sort of what the, the feelings and sensations were just first stepping out into that court with that crowd for that match today. Yeah, I knew Serrano was a very tough opponent and the the crowd, I just thought that I, I mean, playing on court one at Wimbledon, it's it's what you dream of. Not many people get the opportunity to. So I was like, wow, I mean, this is such an experience and such an opportunity. So I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go out there and have fun. And I really think I did like some of the points. Um, I, I'd never played such good tennis in some of the points. So I was, I was just having so much fun. And I also wanted to say that Serana is an incredible opponent. Like I respect her so much and all that she's done in her career. I mean, she's had a really long career. And I remember watching her when I was growing up um, and I was younger and I think she put up an incredible fight as well and I mean we we had some great battle like in in terms of some of the points and um, yeah I just want to congratulate her on on playing like the level but also I I definitely she would have wanted to win so I mean one of us had to do it but I'm sure we'll play again in the future. Go ahead, Emily. Emily Kent Smith. Hi, hi, Emma. Um, well done today. Um, I just wanted to ask. Obviously, your parents were there watching you today. Have you heard from them since you won? And have you heard from any of your school friends? What do they make of the fact that at eighteen you've just gone and done that at Wimbledon? Yeah, so it's so crazy. Well, my parents were here, so I spotted them pretty early on, actually. And um, I've I've also t I've turned all my notifications off on my phone. So I, I just know that whenever my phone buzzes, it's like the Apple News just telling me like what's going on. So um, I have actually received a few emails from my school teachers and um, my math teacher emailed me today as well. Uh, congratulating me so it's just been great to receive messages from my schoolmates as well like they they have been texting me so um yeah i mean i can't wait to see them once once i'm done here really what have your parents said about how well you've played today <laughs> well i called my dad off my um osteo's phone after the match and he didn't reply like he didn't answer so i was like okay <laughs> i mean I'm sure I'll speak to them later tonight. <laughs> Tom Hopkinson. Hello, Emma. It's uh, Tom from the Sunday Mirror and the uh, Sunday People here. Uh, you mentioned on court um, that, that you'd uh, your parents had said to you about packing too much kit. Uh, I, I wondered if you'd managed to speak to them about that and have a little jibe back at them yet. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get them on that later when I call. But it was, it was nice. Like, I went into the changing rooms and... Um, yeah, they were happy to help me out with some laundry and uh, I, I'll get that sorted today and uh, Monday I'll have a fresh kit ready to go. <laughs> ben Rothenberg. Hi, Emma. Ben Rothenberg, New York Times. I read um, that two of your idols in tennis are Lena and Simona Howitt. I guess 
who both are from the sort of countries of your ancestry in Romania and China. And I'm curious, I guess, like how much you trace to those tennis traditions. And also, I guess, sort of having um, being multicultural and I guess having your family having an immigrant mentality, maybe it's all helped you in terms of finding uh, your your career or finding your drive or purpose, whatever it may be in the sport. Yeah, I think that it's it's really such a coincidence that um you know those are two of my favorite players that I try and model my game after and uh I happen to have a connection to both those countries and I think that um I it's definitely helped me the mentality that both of them bring I mean they both come from very hard working countries um you know my on my mom she's always instilled a lot of like discipline and um respect for other people into me so i think that having having parents like i do um they always push me they have high expectations so i've always tried to live up to that um and I, i'm just hope i hope i did them proud this week and i'm going to keep trying to go keep going you see that work ethic in your parents as well i'm curious what they do for a living also uh, they're both in finance, yeah. Simon Cambers. Hi, Emma. Congratulations. Um, I just wanted to ask you, Simon Cambers from The Guardian, um, You, when you stepped out on court, you had a big smile, your arm in the air. You looked like you'd done this a million times. Were, were you not nervous at all? <laughs> I think yesterday I came out here uh, and I sat courtside for about five minutes. Um, they let me to get a feel for the court, which I think was very valuable um, because when I went out there today I sort of knew what to expect a little bit um, and once again I thought that if I'm not going to enjoy court one at Wimbledon home crowd like what are you going to enjoy this is literally the top of tennis and um, I was just so excited when I heard the crowd just roar for the first time I was like wow I mean they're so behind me and I was like I was just feeding off of their energy and um, yeah, I'm just so excited that I get to play in front of them again. Yep. Tom Morgan. Hi Emma, Tom at the Telegraph. Um, I just, just wondered what's so going on that's so special at your school. Obviously, Dina Asher-Smith, a few, few years above you. Um, do, do you know her at all? Uh, well, no, I, I don't know her because she left the year that I joined, but my school, I mean, they've been so incredible and supportive like whenever I've wanted to go and travel or compete or even a training block somewhere they've been so um, you know they've let me go and, and they also support me when I'm away with sending me work and and the teachers have always cut me a lot of slack I would say when I come back and I, I get like delays for tests and stuff so uh, I'm really really grateful for all of their support and the seven years that I've had at Newstead. Laura Scott. Hi, I'm Laura Scott from the BBC. Um, I just wondered, I mean, you played on, on Court One today and spoke about how special that was. We obviously don't know the lineup for Monday yet, but if you got the opportunity to play on centre, what would that mean to you? And, and do you think you'd be kind of overawed by that atmosphere or do you think you'd take it in your stride like you did today? It would mean a lot to me to play on centre court. I mean, I think that's what everyone dreams of, centre court. Uh, especially being a Brit so I would be so grateful for that opportunity and I mean from my perspective I would love to go out there and you know try and embrace the crowd like I did today uh, but every day is a new one so we'll, we'll see what happens I'm really really up for it whatever happens though. Willie Weinbaum. Hi I was wondering what your observations were of how Coco Gauff carried herself when she made a run here two years ago and what your thoughts have been about her game and her maturity since and whether it's affected you in any way. Yeah, I think what Coco did here two years ago was quite spectacular. Um, to come out on such big courts and um, straight away, straight off the bat, uh, receive all of the you know attention that she did following, I think she's handled, handled it all very, very well. Um, so yeah, big respect to her about that. And uh, I think her game, you know, she's she's a very powerful player and an unbelievable athlete. So um, I think that, you know, as of an opponent, she should be very, very difficult to play. Patrick Hill. Hi, I'm Patrick Hill, Sunday Miller. 
So two quick ones. Can I ask um, what are your parents' first names? And then, and also, I know you obviously won one hundred and fifteen thousand pounds today, which is a great amount of money. Uh, I appreciate most of it will go on coaching and everything else. But have you, uh, you know, do you want to treat yourself with anything in particular? Uh, my dad's name's Ian, and my mom's name is Renee. And uh, well, I think the first thing that I would do is take my team out and uh, treat them for a meal. I think that they have supported me so much throughout the years and it's not always been easy. So I think they definitely, you know, definitely deserve um, a nice meal out and yeah, we, we would have a great evening. Paul Newman. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Paul Newman from The Independent. Um, I just wonder your experience here and your matches here, has it surprised you, the um, the level of the tennis that, that your opponents have played and the level of tennis that you've played? I think all of my opponents have been extremely difficult for me to play. Like, uh, they all have their strengths. And I think today, Sarana, like I, as I said, I really, really respect the way that she competes and fights and also her game I mean it was very difficult for me I thought like three love 40 love and then um you know she came back and she came out with big serves on on the big points and uh yeah hitting the ball very close to the line so it was difficult for me and I didn't think I did much wrong to be honest but uh, yeah I mean you don't you don't get to where she is in her career without producing, without fighting and pushing through those tough moments. So I have a lot of respect for her. And as I said, like I watched her growing up. So to play her is on call one at Wimbledon is um, a great experience for me. Martin Lippmann. Yep, hello hello again. Um, you're a wild card, uh, Emma. You're also now the youngest British woman, uh, last 16 player in the open era which is a pretty impressive achievement at 18. Can you start to dream of something even more special now? Does it start, you start to, now you're into the second week. Can you start thinking what, what might be possible, not just this week, but in, in the future? Yeah, I didn't know that was an um, actual uh, a stat or a thing. I, yeah, it's incredible. I'm so grateful for this wild card and Honestly, I just wanted to make the most out of it and, and try show that I, you know, I earned it and try and make the most out of it. So I'm really grateful for the All England Club support um, in taking a chance on me. So, uh, and the way that I'm approaching my matches is each time I'm thinking to myself, why not, you know? Um, like today, I was like, someone's got to be in the second week. Why not me? So, um, so I, th I think that's how I'm approaching it. I'm just trying to stay here as long as possible. As I said, I'm just having such a blast and everything is so well taken care of that it's such a pleasure to be here. The hype is going to build now, though. You're going to be the star term for you know the next few days. I mean, how do you cope with that? Yeah, I cope by giving my phone to my osteo. That's how I cope. <laughs> and I think that just keeping in a really, you know, like a tight knit group with me and my team and they, they've been so supportive and so great this week that uh, everything has been so comfortable for me. Um, yeah, we're having a great time. Okay, we have time for two quick last questions. Ben Rothenberg. And again, Emma, uh, you had some incredible shot making, in the, especially in that stretch of the early in the second set. And I'm just wondering, when you hit some of these crazy winners, like especially on a court like that, how does it feel um, to be able to come up with that sort of shot making on this stage in this moment um, to not only be like winning, but winning with like style points too? <laughs> Yeah, if you ask any of my team, I think they would say, you know, she doesn't run for balls. But I mean, if ever there was a time to start running, that was today. So I'm happy that it paid off. Um, I couldn't believe some of them myself. But uh, I think that playing on court one, you know, you're definitely inspired. So you do things maybe you don't normally do. And um, yeah, I was I was having fun, like just chasing those balls. I mean, it's probably the first time I enjoyed chasing the balls and maybe that's something that I can take on and continue. <laughs> okay, last question, Howard. Uh, two quick things. One is I just want to make sure I understand your high school status. You're still a student or you've finished, you're just waiting to find out your 
final exam scores? Yeah, and... I took my exams in April, um, end of April, and I'm waiting. Results day is mid-August sometime. And uh, in terms of the question you were asked a moment ago about the attention you might have been receiving, uh, things obviously very different and unusual this year being with the bubble and all of that. Do you think that sort of isolation maybe is a good thing for you? A British player doing well at Wimbledon is normally receiving so much hype and attention and all of that. Is it possible that having the arrangement this year might be helping be in a cocoon from all of that? I think in a way it's, it's only my third bubble. So I'm also very new to this and I think that until now, I mean, everything is set up so well that it's so comfortable. And in a way, it, maybe it does help being, you know, in in this own little world and bubble that you don't really go outside or see anyone. And uh, me and my team are really just, you know, we're having dinner t together. Um, everything is just in a really tight and supportive group. So, I mean, it's... I've, I've got no complaints about the bubble. I really like it, actually. OK, we're going to wrap up there. Thank you very much. That concludes the press conference. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thanks a lot. There's a few other bits to do. <laughs> sure. Just keep you busy. No, One don't. <laughs>